Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with another one of Dave's faves. And today we're going to talk about Mahler's Das Lied von der Erde, The Song of the Earth, certainly one of his supreme masterpieces and one of the most original and fascinating works by anybody about anything. Oh, the music is so beautiful. I don't need to tell you about it. it. You know, I mean, you already know it and you've heard it. And I just want to tell you what my favorite recording is and why and what makes it special in my view. It is this one. It features Janet Baker, James King, the Concertgebouw Orchestra under Bernard Heitink on formerly Phillips and now Decca. Now, Heitink was one of those curious creatures. I tell this story frequently, but I think it's always worth repeating because he gave an interview, it was in Gramophone magazine, where he said that Mahler was a special composer who ought not to be performed too often, that people do it too much. He then went and made several hundred thousand recordings of every single Mahler symphony he could get his little paws on for whatever reason, and they just got mostly steadily worse. Uh, you know, I mean, it was really just an, I, I never could figure him out. I never understood why he did that. But, and this is the big but, the however moment. He had many opportunities, but he only made one recording of Das Lied von der Erde. And there was a reason. <laughs> The reason is because this was as fabulous and as perfect a performance as he could possibly have achieved in the modern era with the singers available to him. Janet Baker, as we all know, was a supreme interpreter of Mahler's leader. She did the three song cycles with Barbaroli on Warner, EMI, and they are absolutely splendid. She knew exactly what she was doing. Always. And she recorded Das Lied von der Erde more than once as well. She did it with the Israel Philharmonic and Bernstein. But this was much better sonically. And the playing of the orchestra is just well. We'll get to that in a second. James King. James King was an actual, authentic Heldon tenor. He had the voice for the part. Now, there are wonderful tenors who've sung it, including Fritz Wunderlich, of course, for Klemperer. And they're really, they're, they're just marvelous. But, but you really need a voice with this kind of heft. John Vickers could have done it in his prime, but he did it, unfortunately, with Colin Davis when he was way past his prime and just screamed his way through it like a lunatic. It was such a pity. And, you know, Julius Patzak, who was a genuine held in tenorish type person who did it for Bruno Walter with Kathleen Ferry in the Vienna Phil, was also way past his prime when he did it. James King was getting past his prime when he did it, but he wasn't there yet. He wasn't there yet. And he sounds really, really good. Normally, we're stuck with a sort of German leader singer type person like Ernst Hayfliger or one of those guys. And, you know, they're not bad. They're not terrible, but they, they can't compete with the orchestra. And, you know, it just doesn't have the, the, the heroic, ballsy contrast you need with the other songs. So you have two really great singers. And Baker never made a greater record than this. Then you've got the Concertgebouw Orchestra. Oh, my goodness. With one of the great woodwind sections in the history of mankind. I mean, they're known for their woodwind section. They're amazing wind playing. And Heitink, who is a really terrific conductor in this work, particularly, because it is something of a, you know, it's not a flashy work. It's a work that it's based on sympathetic cooperation between all of the participants, including the individual members of the orchestra. You have to have a fabulous solo flute, a fabulous oboe, fabulous horns. You, you, you've just got to have an orchestra where every single person has the personality of a great soloist when they're projecting their lines. And they do. They just do. You will not hear a more exquisitely played performance of Das Lied von der Erde, and it is absolutely fabulously recorded, done just before the digital era destroyed the sonics of Philips for like about five years or so until they figured out how to use the new technology. So 
I, from the very first moment I heard this, and I have, I have several recordings of Desolate von der Erde that I love. There is the Klemperer, there's the Bruno Walter stereo version with Mildred Miller and Ernst Hayflieger. There are quite a few others that are wonderful. And Baker did another terrific one with Raphael Kubelik live on Aldito, which is absolutely superb. There are, there are, there is no shortage of very fine performances of Das Lied von der Erde. But when all is said and done, when I want to hear Das Lied von der Erde, the performance that I reach for is this one. And it is the most satisfying performance. It so wonderfully withstands repetition. You could listen to it a hundred million times. It never gets tired. Never, ever, ever. So for my money, as my own preference, as Dave's fave, it's the Heitink Baker King Das Lied von der Erde. It's one of the miracles of the Mahler discography, in my view. It really is. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.